Madam President, uh, honest people may have differences of opinion as to what type of public policies to pursue uh, to improve our economy, but there really should not be a difference of opinion uh, in terms of the state of the economy today, whether it is Michigan, your state, whether it's Vermont, my state, or any of the other 48 states. Uh, the fact of the matter is that for tens and tens of millions of working families in this country, uh, people are having and experiencing great difficulty. And within that context, and the context of the Wall Street Journal uh, reporting today uh, that uh, today was a day when America's financial system was shaken to its core, and the Dow Jones average went down by some 500 points, I found it rather stunning, if I may use that word, but to hear Senator McCain uh, state that, and I quote, the fundamentals of our economy are strong, end of quote. And in saying that, he is simply echoing what President Bush has been saying year after year after year, despite all of the evidence to the contrary. And, and one really does try to uh, get a handle on an understanding what world uh, Senator McCain and, and, and President Bush are living in when they would suggest that, quote, the fundamentals of our economy are strong. Clearly, uh, they have not been talking to working families uh, around the United States of America. Now, my perception of the economy is that if you get off of the country club circuit, you stop talking to the millionaires and the billionaires and the large campaign contributors, but you talk to ordinary working people, people who own small businesses, uh, what you find, in fact, is that the middle class in our country is on the more assault than has been the case uh, since just before the Great Depression. Uh, the reality of American life today is that poverty is increasing. Over five million Americans have slipped out of the middle class into poverty. What we have all over America is families where mom and dad are both working are now lining up outside emergency food shelves because the limited income that they are earning are not providing enough money to buy the food they and their kids need. Uh, that does not suggest to me that the fundamentals of our economy are strong. Since President Bush has been in office, over seven million Americans have lost their health insurance and the cost of health insurance has soared. Approximately 20,000 Americans die every single year because they can't gain access to medical care, to primary health care. We spend twice as much per capita on health care as any other nation, and yet we are the only nation in the industrialized world that does not provide, by law, health care to all of its people. Madam President, that does not suggest to me that, quote, the fundamentals of our economy are strong. Health care is perhaps the most basic need, maybe outside of food, outside of shelter that people have. Forty-six million Americans without health insurance. I don't quite understand how Senator McCain believes that in that regard the fundamentals of our economy are strong. Uh, Madam President, since President Bush has been in office, median income for working age Americans has gone down by over $2,000 after adjusting for inflation. Family income is going down. People are spending more for food. The cost of gas, of course, is now off the wall. College education costs are up. How does that sound like a situation in which, quote, the fundamentals of our economy are strong end of quote, according to Senator McCain. And I think the confusion in all of this is pretty easily understood. Uh, the truth is that the fundamentals of our economy are strong if you are within the top 1% of our country. If you're a millionaire or a billionaire, you know what? Senator McCain is right. For those people, the fundamentals of the economy are strong. Uh, 
if you are one of the 400 wealthiest people in our country, you collectively own $1.4 trillion of America, 400 families, and your wealth has exploded in the last eight years. In fact, in America today, the top one-tenth of one percent earn more income than do the bottom 50 percent. So within the, that context, certainly, if you're among the top one-tenth of one percent, we can understand why Senator McCain would suggest that the fundamentals of our economy are strong. What frightens me is that anyone who is so removed from the economic reality facing the American people clearly is not going to have a prescription on how to address the real problems facing ordinary Americans. If your diagnosis is wrong, if you're a physician and you make an incorrect diagnosis, your treatment isn't going to work very well. And if you're a president of the United States, whether it is Bush or something that McCain aspires to, clearly your actions are not going to be effective if you don't understand what is going on. Uh, Madam President, uh, let me just, if I might, contrast uh, what has been going on under President uh, Bush just compared to what was going on under President Clinton. And I'm not here to tell you that under President Clinton everything was rosy, there were no problems, most certainly not the case. And I personally, as an independent, have some strong disagreements with the Clinton administration on a number of issues, including trade. But it is important to understand just contrasting what Clinton accomplished for the middle class as opposed to what Bush did. And in fact, McCain's ideas ought to follow economically uh, the line of action that President Bush has established over the last eight years. During the Clinton administration, over 22 million new jobs were created. Were all of those jobs great paying jobs? No, they weren't. But 22 million jobs is a significant number of new jobs. And under the Bush administration, less than 6 million new jobs were created. 22 million, 6 million. During the Clinton administration, 6 million Americans were lifted out of poverty. They went from poverty to the middle class. That is a good thing. Under the Bush administration, the exact opposite occurred. 6 million Americans went from the middle class into poverty. Under Clinton, median income went up. Under Bush, median income went down. So, uh, Madam President, I'm not quite clear how our colleague, uh, Senator McCain, believes that the fundamentals of our economy uh, are strong. Uh, Madam President, the dynamic of what is going on in this country economically is that under the Bush-McCain economic policies, 99% of Americans have been net losers under President Bush's tax and spending policies. And what we are seeing is a historical shift, a redistribution of wealth and income from the middle class to the very wealthy. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars going out of the pockets of the middle class, ending up in the pockets of the wealthiest 1%. Uh, Madam President, I sit on the Budget Committee, and I have some sense of where this country is spending its money and where this country is not spending its money. And I have very great concerns that four more years of Bush's policies, in which we continue to give huge tax breaks to the wealthiest 1% while underfunding the needs of the middle class and working families, while ignoring our environment, while not investing in sustainable energy, while maintaining an absurd health care policy in which health care costs rise, in which more and more people are underinsured. I fear that four more years of those policies will create a situation in which the middle class of this country, from which the middle class of this country may never recover. Madam President, what the American dream has always been about is that 
parents work very, very hard, and that was certainly the case within my family, to try to see their kids do better uh, than they did. My parents never went to college. My parents never had much money. My parents never in a million years would have dreamed that their son would be a United States senator, way outside of, <laughs> of the wildest dreams. They worked hard so that my brother and I could have a better life economically than they did. What I worry about, and it's not just me, it is economists all over this country who are now looking at our economy, the fact that we are shedding millions of good-paying blue-collar jobs, that we are shedding millions of good-paying white-collar jobs. But economists are now saying that for the first time in the modern history of this country, our kids, the young people, our grandchildren, will in fact, if we do not reverse course, have a lower standard of living than their parents. In other words, the American dream, which is what the middle class was all about, has now been turned upside down. So that there are large numbers of working people today who are earning less money than their parents did, who are living in less adequate housing than their parents did. Now, it seems to me that if there's anything we have learned over the last eight years in which President Bush has given an incredible amount of tax breaks to people who don't need it, uh, in which we have re deregulated industry where we have ignored global warming and investing in sustainable energy. It just seems to me that if there's anything that we have learned in the last eight years is that this trickle-down economics of tax breaks for billionaires and cutting back on the needs of ordinary people is not the direction uh, that this country uh, should be moving in. So, uh, Madam President, please count me in as someone who does not believe, as Senator McCain does, that the fundamentals of this economy are strong. I think the middle class is being shaken right now. People are frightened. Uh, and we need a new course uh, for this country. So, Madam President, thank you very much. And uh, with that, I would yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll.